You are now listening to The Forefront Radio, where we discuss history, the Bible, the history of the Israelites, science, and other matters. Bring it out. The history of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans as it relates to the Bible. Who were you prior to slavery? Who were you prior to colonization? These answers and more can be seen and heard as you listen to The Forefront Radio. The falsehood of the heathen tonight. All right, so Genesis 42 and verse 6. We're gonna start with Joseph. Now, the doctor, now the rumor is that uh these uh pathetics that the Egyptians in some fantasy world of Harry Potter, maybe I don't know, were white, and the Jews or the Hebrews, is Israelites, which Joseph was an Israelite, the descendant of, of Israel, Jacob, was white. Okay, so we're going to read about Joseph first. Genesis 42, verse 6. The book of Genesis, chapter 42 and verse 6. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And he, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. Uh-huh. 
And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. So Joseph recognized his brothers. He saw them. They didn't recognize him. Why didn't they recognize him? Because he was dressed like an Egyptian. He had a clean shaven, makeup, whatever. So he was, they couldn't they didn't recognize him, right? Jump, no, he recognized them. Jump down to verse, mm, read on, read on. Verse, verse 9. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them and said unto them, Ye are spies, to seek the nakedness of the land ye are come. Yeah. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. Go ahead. So he accused him of stealing. Go ahead. We are all one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. Go jump to verse 20. Verse 20. But bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. Go ahead. And they said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when we besought us. When he besought us. When he besought us. And we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. What's happened to us now, we deserve it because they sold him into slavery. So remember, the point of this is that they're having a dialogue with Joseph. They're looking at him. They're talking. It's not through some wall. They're talking to him directly. Go ahead. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and you would not hear. Therefore, behold, all his blood is required. Whatever happens to us is our own fault for starting into slavery. Go ahead. And they knew not that Joseph understood them. Go ahead. For he spake unto them by an interpreter. So they're, talk he's so the they're talking to his interpreter in Hebrew. He's translating it to Joseph in Egyptian. And then Joseph speaking Egyptian, speaking to the interpreter. He's talking to him in Hebrew. So they're having a dialogue. Now, here's the question. Why don't they recognize Joseph among Egyptians? Shalom. It was all black. It was all the same skin color. Say again? It was all black. Thank you. Because he looked like an Egyptian. Because he looked like an Egyptian. He passed for an Egyptian. They didn't recognize him. He looked like the Egyptians. Y'all understand? Because if he was a white boy... And Egyptians, let's say Egyptians are black and the Jews and Hebrews are white. You recognize a white boy dressed in Egyptian clothing. Like Eminem, dressed like, like us. You know he, oh, he's black. No, you know he's not black. That's a white boy dressed like a Negro. So likewise, they recognize their brother. Hey, look at that, that shaven dude. Joseph? They would recognize them. That would be clear. But they didn't recognize him because he looked like the Egyptians. He spoke to them by an interpreter. He's speaking to them in Egyptian. He's speaking to his interpreter in Egyptian. And the, and the interpreter is translating what he's saying to them in their language and vice versa to him. Let me help them out. If Joseph was white man, it wouldn't have matter what kind of clothes he put on. It wouldn't have matter what kind of language interpretation. They would have recognized that he was not Egyptian. They would have recognized that. Mm -hmm. See what I'm talking about? Got to get the cells together, get the brains moving. Go ahead. Let's prove it. Joseph was a black man. The name of this book is entitled Our Living Bible, put together by the biblical scholars of this society. This is the picture here. Now, remember what it says. It says Joseph was governor in Genesis 42, verse 6. He was governor. What did that say, Captain Isaac? So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house. The blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and field. See that? Painting from the tomb of N of not 15th century BC. BC. See that? So that's Joseph's status from worker there to governor. So Sit where there. so where's Joseph in the picture? Huh? The one sitting on the throne up there. Y'all see him? That's Joseph because he's over Egypt. That's what you're looking at. That's Joseph there. Yep. Look at look at look at him. Black. Look at that dark color on him. You get white from there. <laughs> There's no red there. No off-white, none of that. That's a brown man. That's Joseph. And guess what? If Joseph looked like that, guess what looked like that? His brothers, too. And his dad and his mom. Okay. That's called common sense. Let's go to... Now we're going to deal with Mo Exodus 2, verse 15. Now we're going to deal with Moses. Because remember, Joseph was an Israelite, and so was Moses. He was one too. Let's see what maybe maybe his color changed. 
So where are we going now? Exodus 2, verse 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 15. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the... No, 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 no. Let's go to the movie first. Go to the clip first. Okay. Let's go to the Second Commandments clip first. Okay, now we... There we go. How long is the clip? Uh, we'll just get right to it. Yeah, this it ain't clean. Yeah. long. All right. long. We're going to go to the movie... With Charlton, with Charleston Heston. Charlton Heston. The, called the, the, the Ten Commandments. We watched this earlier today, too. Right. So let me give you all some, let me give you a, a little background. Moses, Mo, this is Moses, this is the movie about Moses going and he conquered the Ethiopian king. And he's going to bring it to the Egyptian king, Pharaoh, up on the, up on the, uh, on the wall. Now, this was actually filmed in Cairo, Egypt, so you can understand. Mm -hmm. This is the actual palace. This is this is not backdrop Hollywood. This is actually filmed in Cairo, Egypt. Okay, Sissa B. DeMille, he actually took his cameras and all that stuff over there and filmed this, so you can understand what it's talking about. Go. Okay. The Lord Moses, Prince of Egypt, son of the Pharaoh's sister, beloved of the Welcome home. The, 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 the blessings of the god Amun Ra be upon you, great prince. He has brought down the pride of Ethiopia. He has set his gold in bank. He has raised Egypt to its feet. I agree with it. Exalted on earth, O conqueror, even as a sun is exalted in the heavens. Now that's Seti, that's Set right there. Seti, the first right there, and next to him, the woman is Nepatiri. Keep her in mind. The woman next to him is, I think it's his daughter. Nepatiri, all right? Okay. Yeah. Welcome to my sister's son. We have heard how you took Ibis from the Nile to destroy the venomous serpents used against you when you laid siege to the city of Saba. May my arms stay strong in your service, great city. Who is this fair young god come into the house of Pharaoh? No need to tell you how I share her joy at your return. No need, my brother. Great one, I bring you Ethiopia. What color are the Ethiopians? Why didn't they now, and who are the Egyptians in the picture? The white ones. Can we read the Bible dictionary, please? Just for a second. Yeah, that's it. You can go there now. Yeah, I have to go there. Mm -hmm. Have to go there. The white man's now, lies. Now, I mind you, they, <laughs> they, the, 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 the pathetics teach that we descend from the from them, Cushites. First in slavery, we were Canaanites. Right. Now they, now they remixed it. Now, now we're Cushites now. Mm. And this, these are Cushites. Ethiopia is Cush. So they're saying that that's us there, and he's teaching that that's them, white folks. That's them there. So they're pushing the same nonsense agenda this movie pushed the years ago it was made. The same exact thing in 2017. Pushing the exact same thing. Egyptians is white, and you Negroes were Kushites or Nubians. Okay. You got it? Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Not the Negroes, but he said, what, is, what did it say about Ham? Read it again. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Hold on, y'all see this here? It says, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons that lived through the flood, Ham, that's what the he is, he became the father, the word progenitor means father, of the dark races. So these are the dark races that came out of Ham. But then he first starts off by saying, not the Negroes. So Ham was not the Negroes' father. So Ham did not come, I mean, the Negroes did not come out of Ham. That's what the first thing that the scholar sets aside. He removes the Negroes from the whole seed of Ham, period. Right. So you so-called Negroes are not Hamitic at all. 
You didn't come from the seed of Shem, I mean, from the seed of Ham at all. Right. But now he's going to tell you who came out of this, out, out of one of the, of the dark races. He was the father of the dark races. Now let's name the dark races. Go ahead. But the Egyptians? So the Egyptian is a dark race. Ethiopians. Ethiopians is a dark race. Libyans. Libyans, the, the, the Africans in the north part of Africa. Go ahead. And Canaanites. And the Canaanites, the South Africans. Do you see that? So now, let's go back to the film. No, no, oh, hold on. Okay. Something else. Get what I sent you to Cambridge? Okay. Now, this is what was used in, the, in their video. He, I don't know why he read this for. This, this was in the, this was in, what's in the, the name? Yeah, he used to say, we're, we're, we're Cushites. It says, okay. Cush in Hebrew and Ethiopia. Cush is the name in Hebrew. Ethiopia is the name in Greek. Designate the land and people of the upper Nile River from modern southern Egypt into Sudan. The more indigenous term for this region is Nubia. Ham is another Hebrew term for the darker hued people. Hold it. Of antiquity. Wait a minute. He said what? Ham, Ham is another Hebrew term for the dark people. The darker hued people color. of antiquity. In Genesis 10, Ham is the son of Noah who populates Africa. So if his children populated Africa and they're dark hued people, who the hell are we seeing in this movie? Now let's go That's back to the movie. That's their confusion. Y'all all right? They used this against us. I don't know what the hell they was doing that for. I don't get it. Good now, the whiteness. Let's go back to the movie now. Go back to the clip that we were looking at. So tell me this. How in the world are they going to have up on the stage the, the, the Ethiopians and the Egyptians are blood brothers? They both come from Ham. Why is it that they got the Egyptians as white people when they said that their both their father was ham, black. But Esau and Jacob is, is, is madness, being black and white, one's white. That's possible, right? but Esau and Jacob right. is, is, is fallacious. Right, exactly. Did y'all okay. get that? But we read out of the dictionary that it said what? He became the father of the dark races, and then it named them. It said the Egyptians. So why do they have white folks here? You want to know why? Because they wanted to say that Moses passed for white to make him white as well. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? That's the evil that these people have done. But they couldn't lie about the Ethiopians because too many people would have woke up. You to try to make the Ethiopians white, but wait a minute. Yep. We got the Cambodia, the people starving with the big belly and all that. Mm -hmm. We know that that's black people, so you can't lie about them. You mean burnt face? You follow me? White so no, they wouldn't have gotten away with that. But they said, well, we can lie about the Egyptians because they know people don't really know the history. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand how these people get down. Y'all follow me? Now, now you see the woman that's sitting beside him. That's Nefertiri. Did y'all see that when they called it? They called her name in this in this clip. Did y'all see that? Or maybe did they? Did they say her name? It don't matter. Okay. It don't matter. But that's who that is. Yeah, put it okay. side by side. That's put, good. Side by side. Man, now, now, let's see what it says. Night how y'all like that? Night and day. How y'all like that? What does it say there, Isaac? How graceful are your feet in sandals, O queenly maiden? Queen Amos Nefertiri, 13th century B.C. on painting, Deir el Medina, Egypt. So you see that? So Nefertiri, which was an Egyptian, meaning that Pharaoh was supposed to look like her. Mm -hmm. So you can understand. And if Pharaoh looked like her and Moses passed for an Egyptian, that meant that Moses was supposed to look like this as well. Y'all see that? And if Moses looked like this, that means Joseph, like we showed earlier, looked like, looked like this, meaning all the Israelites are dark people. Right. Bam! You didn't know we had these books. Stop talking about us, or we're going to destroy you. Where's more? Nepotiri. Night and day. That's complete whitewashing right there. Madness. So the Egyptians were black, dark-hued people. Everyone understand that? All right, it's written on their own walls. <laughs> hey, but that movie that we watching right there, that's white supremacy. Yep. You understand? That's what that is. You understand? That's what Christianity is based on, white supremacy. You understand? If you try anything great, they try to say it's them. Mm -hmm. You know, you read about the Egyptians. The Egyptians was a great people. That's why you got a lot of Negroes running around that they're trying to be Egyptians because at one point in time, they was a great people. Mm -hmm. You understand? The, the, so the Egyptians was great. Guess what the white man say? 
We were the Egyptians. You understand? Christ, another great man. Moses, another great man. The white man said, these is our people because guess yes, what? I am. Guess what? If the white man, if Esau, if they say, okay, Moses was a black, was a dark-skinned man, or they admit that, that we are Israelites, you know what they're saying? You know what Esau is saying if he admit that Moses was dark-skinned or, or he admit that we are the original Israelites? You know what he's going, he's literally admitting that, that, that he the devil the Bible speaks of. You understand? And he's admitting that he going to be judged for what he did. Because if we are the Israelites and he did all, if we are God's people, the Israelites, and he know in his heart he hate us. And all that evil he did to us. He, he know that there is a God. You understand? And he know judgment is going to come to him. That's why in his mind, he will never, he will never say that we are the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And any white, any dark image that you got set up, he going to say, he going to destroy it. Hide or try to hide it from us. And he going to always push that lie that Jesus was white. The Egyptians is white. You know, he won't push that white supremacy. But it's up to you. It's up to you all to see beyond that line, man. It's up to you all. Right. 2.15. Exodus 2.15. Thank you. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. Because Moses killed an Egyptian, so he ran. Go ahead. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Go ahead. Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters. Mm -hmm. And they came and drew water and filled the trolls to water their father's flock. Mm -hmm. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them mm -hmm. and yeah. watered their flock. Go ahead. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he, AKA sa Jethro. Go ahead. he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? Watch this. And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. These women were Ethiopians. They would have known whether or not Moses was either an Egyptian or a Hebrew if he were a white Hebrew. Because Ethiopians and Egyptians are what? Relatives. They said Moses, an Egyptian has come to help us at the, at the well. So they confuse Moses with what? Moses is raised as a what? How did Nipateri look? Like a what? Like a black woman. So how is he, he raised in the house of Pharaoh with a woman that dark unless he had to pass for, unless he had to pass for her child? You understand? Yes, sir. So obviously Moses was a black man. Let's get chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse. Verse 6. Yeah, verse 6, yeah. Exodus 4, verse 6. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. So he told Moses, put your hand inside your bosom. And, you're gone. And, he okay. and he put it, and he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. His hand was, came out white. Go ahead. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. Put your hand back into your shirt again, your garment again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. What's the other flesh? Black flesh. It's the opposite. Other is the opposite of white. Leprous is snow. It's the opposite. Not the same. What miracle would that be? Put a white hand in your garment, come out as white again. Right, and leprous... Yo, your, your hand is white again. What's the real cool on that? A white hand is a whiter hand? Was he powder? So taught it. Right, Dead. and also on leprosy ain't talking about sores. It's talking about you losing your pigment in your, pigment in your skin. That's what leprosy is. Yep. You know, when you go to... Um, when you read about Miriam, you getting that? No, I wasn't getting when that. When you read about Miriam, remember what the Mosai hit her with leprosy too. He said that she looked like one that was dead. Yep. You understand? Yep. Because when somebody dead, you know how they look pale. Mm -hmm. There's no pigment in their skin. Mm -hmm. So that's what lepro le leprosy is. Right. You know, because you know the, the same dude, he talk about the leprosy and talk about sores. Yeah. You know, yeah. Job had leprosy, and guess what? The most also smite him with sores. Yeah. You understand? It wasn't just leprosy Job had. The most like this also smite him with sores. Yeah. You understand? So... Losing, have, lo having leprosy is me. losing your pigment in your skin. Esau calls it vitiligo. Can, can he he changed that? the entire definition around. Can I read it real quick? What he quoted with um, numbers. 
Real quick, it's only two verses. Yeah. We're in Numbers chapter 12, verse 11. This is when the Most High plagued Miriam yeah, for running her mouth against Moses because he married the Ethiopian woman. So the Lord called them, all three of them, to the temple, and he played uh, Miriam with leprosy. He said, And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not this sin upon us where we have done foolishly and where we, in, we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. So the Most High stripped the pigment from her. Because when you, hey, when you see, sometimes you see Edomites, right? Like, especially when the place real cold, some of them, they look pale, real pale. You understand? They look, you look at them, you don't, you don't even see the, you, they, they, you don't even see the redness. Some of them look pale like they dead. Hey, let's, you understand? Even, let's even use the analogy if he said, when he said, um, let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. You people in here that have dark-skinned children, you see how they are when they're first born? And then as their melanin sets in, the baby gets its regular complexion. It's very dark. You see the baby when it comes out. It's very, very light. Okay? And that's what he was describing here. When the melanin was stripped from her skin, and she looked with that pale skin. Okay? That's why he gave the analogy of a baby when it comes out. The parents could be dark, but when that baby comes out, because that color hasn't set in, that's what he described Miriam to. Person with no color. Go to Exodus 4 and 2. Exodus 4 and 2. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand. Hold it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Continue reading. Stay. Go ahead. And put forth the hand and do what? And take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Now, the reason why I've had this read is because Deacon Malachi was correct when he said that this movie was about white supremacy. Y'all listening? Because they showed that miracle in the movie. Show it to them. Just show the clip so they can see. You found the part? Play it. Let my people go. The slaves are mine lives are mine all that they own is mine I do not know your God nor will I let Israel go who are you to make their lives bitter in hard bondage man shall be ruled by law not by the will of other men who is this God that I should let your people go Aaron Cast down my staff before Pharaoh, that he may see the power of God. In this you shall know that the Lord is God. Over here, it said this part of the movie, correct? Read it again, and then read on. Exodus 4 and 2. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. So let me, guess you, let me give you some understanding. What we're reading here happened before this scene here with the Pharaoh, so you can understand. But the fact that they brought it back to the time of Pharaoh, why didn't they bring this next part out? Read the next piece. And the Lord, verse 6, And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Hold it. If they would have put that in the movie, too many of you would have woke up. So they said, don't put that in there. Mm -hmm. Get it out. Because if Moses would have been white, just like you said earlier, mm -hmm. what would have been the miracle? Yep. And too many of you, wait, wait, wait a minute, he was black in his hand. The, the Israelites are black. No, they said, no, don't do that. Just get that whole scene out. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what the brother just read earlier about he told Moses to put his hand into his bosom, and when he pulled it out, his hand was leprous. Then he told him to put it back into his bosom again, and it came out his, uh, just like his other flesh, meaning the rest of his body. Did y'all get that? 
So the miracle was his hand turning white. That's the point. So why they didn't put that in the movie? Because they wanted you to think Moses was white completely, period. Mm -hmm. Lies. Y'all got that? Vitiligo, they call it. They turn leprosy. The most high calls it leprosy. Yep. I don't know what leprosy. this mess they got in the hospital. The, the most high call it leprosy. Now, there's another book called <laughs> The Black Image in the White Mind, The Debate on Afro-American Character and Destiny. Now, 1817, where were we? Okay. To 1914, fighting for what? Trying to fight for rights and so forth. So we, had, we were still damn near slaves in their mind all throughout this time here. So this is two, this goes into the history of, uh, of uh, I'll, just, I'll just read to y'all. This is page uh, 74 and 75. Yes, sir. Page 74, the black image in the white mind. Right. The originator of the new scientific ethnology was Dr. Samuel George Morton of Philadelphia, who published a book in 1839. Ethnology is a science of races. Ethnology. Ethnicity, ethnology. Go ahead. Who published a book in 1839 that promised to bring an end to loose speculation about racial origins and differences by opening an era of hard-headed empirism. Regarding where blacks come from. Go ahead. Morton's Crania Americana was so the... So Crania, Amer Crania Americana, he studied the skull. Remember the movie Django, where Candy had the skull of Ben? So these guys dealt with that science, skulls of Negroes, crania americana, the American skull, basically. Skull of Americans or African Americans. Go ahead. Was the result of years of collecting and examining human skulls. Ours. Go ahead. As he gathered and studied the crania of different types of men, Morton became aware of the differences between white, Indian, and Negro skulls and of the fact that the ancient crania from a given race did not seem to differ from those of their modern descendants. Yeah. Morton concluded that the races had always had the same physical characteristics and by implication the same mental qualities. In the 1840s, Morton collaborated with George R. Glidden, an Egyptologist who provided him with mummy heads and information about the racial significance of Egyptian tomb inscriptions. Stop. So now he decides to, to um, cooperate with an, with an Egyptian craniologist. He's an American craniologist. This guy does the skulls of Egyptians. You understand? Y'all follow so far? These two Edomites, working, during the time we were slaves, these Edomites are working together to figure out the origin of black folks. So he dealt with a, he went to a, a craniologist of Egyptians, the, those, the, the tombs and so forth. Go ahead. In crania e egyptica. In cranio egyptica. That's his Greek for uh, whatever. Egyptian, Egyptian skulls. Go ahead. Published in 1844, Morton pointed out that both cranial and archaeological evidence showed that the Egyptians were not Negroes. Stop. Because they thought we were. Why? What they saw on the walls. Nefertiti. Oh, they're Egyptians. But they realized, based on their studies, we're not Egyptians. Just like Zonovan said. Just like Cambridge said. Go ahead. As abolitionists and... Colon colonialists, colonialists, colonialists had maintained. As they thought. They thought, oh, they, we're all Africans. They said, nah, we're wrong about that. Go ahead, watch this. And that, in fact, blacks had been relegated to the same servile position in ancient Egypt as in modern America. <coughs> I don't think they got that. Do you understand what you just heard? Read again. And that, in fact, Blacks in fact, stop, just stay alone. In fact, what they've learned, not based on their assumptions, Go ahead. but in fact, they learn what? Blacks. Blacks had, had, been, had been relegated to the same servile position. To the same servile position. In ancient Egypt. In Egypt. As in modern America. White folks will read that and they'll understand that the Negroes are the Jews. That's what they will read, but we... With this African trip and all this madness, we be still talking some foolishness. That's what that book just told you, that they know that you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. So the reason, now I know the reason why you brought it up, because I didn't read that. I didn't know about that. Hey. That backs up what's read in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary clearly. And it also backs this up. Read that hey. next. Hey, Hold it. Let me bring up one point before you move on from there. Go to Deuteronomy, 20, Deuteronomy 28 and 68 and then jump to verse 46. Because what they say, you're going to hear, this is the new doctrine you're going to hear. The new doctrine is that slavery took, part, took place in the time of the Romans. Right? But get that and read it real quick. Deuteronomy oh, yeah. 28 and 68. 
then jump to verse 46. Jump back to verse 46. We Do gonna the prove them apologetics lie because we just we just read that read what it what what that book said right. It says that the the, the slave share in America right it ha- went through the same bondage as the slave in Egypt. They had the same gland in their skull right. Oh, it's the same people. It's the same people. Right? So read that. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. When it says Egypt here, all right, the word Egypt here is synonymous to bondage or the house of bondage. All right? It doesn't literally mean the ancient Egypt because they said when the Romans came against us, they took us back into Egypt as slaves again. But this is not what this is talking about. All right, read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy us, meaning no man shall save us. All right, now, now even if they say, okay, even if they say, okay, this happened in the time of the Romans, it ain't talking about the slaves and them, what took part, what took place in the 1600s. Read verse 46. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So, so, the, so the scripture says that the curse is going to be upon us for what? A sign and for a wonder. For a sign. For a sign for us to know who we are today. And a wonder for us to wonder why these things happen to us. So these curses is going to be upon us for a sign and a wonder, read on. And upon thy seed forever. And upon the Israelites' seed forever. So guess what? We gonna we just read that the children of Israel gonna go into Egypt on ships, right? Guess what? That didn't happen one time. That didn't happen two times. That didn't happen three times. It's something that happened over and over and over and over and over. You understand? Every time a nation rose up and came into power. They took the Israelites as slaves, you know? When you read about the Babylonians, the Babylonians, they came and they, and they took us into slavery, right? Guess what? They probably sent some of, us, some, some of us on ship too, you know? When you read about the Persians, they came and took us as slaves. Guess what? A lot of our forefathers had to go to the Su- to, um, Sushan all the way to Elam. Guess what? They probably took us over there on ships too. Same thing with the Greeks, the Romans. But guess what? This is the last time it's going to happen. You understand? This this time when they brought us here in America, this is the last slavery that we're going to ever go through. This is the last time we're going to be taken in slavery on slave ships. So yes, this prophecy right here belongs to us. All right? And it is ha- talking about what happened in the 1600s. So you all don't listen to those lying demons, man. Apologetics. They don't understand the Bible. Because imagine if they say, you know what? This right here is really talking about the Negroes. <laughs> you understand You understand if they admit that what's going to happen? So that's why they got to find ways to, to make this don't be true in your eyes. You understand? Yeah, Phil 68, please. Now, the guy in the video, man, she read a revised version Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. He read this. Read that right there. Right. Read your Bible, too. It's in this Catholic Bible here. This is a Catholic Bible, mm-hmm. the... Uh, Tyndale in uh, Catholic Living Bible illustrated. Yeah, the, Tyndale the is revised. It's still a revised version. Regardless. It's revised, right? It's revised. Sixty-eight, Go ahead. right? It's a paraphrased Bible. That's what they call it. Mm-hmm. It says, "This is verse sixty-eight, Deuteronomy twenty-eight. Then the Lord will send you back to Egypt in ships, mm-hmm. a journey I promise you would never need to make again, and there you will offer to sell yourselves to your enemies as slaves." But no one, no, but no one will even want to buy you. So the guy goes, "See, you didn't offer yourselves in slavery. They took you as slaves. So that's not talking about you. That's what he said. Now get the what you want to get. What it says in that same Bible regarding us in that same book. So now about going back to the ham in Genesis. Yep. It says, as there's a footnote at the bottom of the page. It says Ham was not the ancestor of the Negro." as was once erroneously supposed. Wow. <laughs> Same book. Same book. Is that Ham was not the ancestor of the Negro, as was erroneously. once erroneously supposed. Being wrong. 
Wrong. In we were fact, wrong as hell. That's what they say. Right. We were wrong as hell. But in fact, the rebellion gave to the same condi serve our conditions in Egypt as they were in America. That's what they're saying, the exact same thing. Do y'all understand that? Yes, I am. Do y'all understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Let's get um, BibleArchaeology.org. I want that. That's the picture of Egyptians doing work on the walls. Those are Egyptians. It's this tomb of Mena, Thebes, circa 1420 BC. Those are Egyptians um, dealing with, um, with grain. See that? Moses passed for that. You saw Nefertiti, how dark she was, right? So where are the Egyptians white at? Where are they white? This is black. These are Egyptians on the wall. Scroll a little bit higher. Go bring it down so you can see the top. See the feet? Look at the feet. These are their feet. Then you see, their, then you see the whole body. As you go further down, well, that's not the same thing, but different picture. But on the bottom there, too, that's all Egyptians there. Where are the white Egyptians? They came during the time of the Greeks, during Ptolemaic dynasty. Ptolemaic dynasty, the Greeks became pharaohs. Then the Romans became pharaohs to put their own images up there and whitewash them and so forth and knock the noses off, like the Sphinx, to push their supremacist, white supremacist agenda because racism requires power. Black folks can't walk around blackwashing white images. We can't do that. We haven't done that. We, we lack the power to do that. Y'all understand? Right. Let's go to um, the video I sent you on YouTube. So there's the, there's the you got clip it? for the brothers to see what we read out of the book. Okay, there it goes. Blow it up more so they can see it. See that? Ham is not the ancestor of the Negro as was erroneously supposed. So they taught that to us in slavery. You're, Ham, you're Canaan. You're black. That's a curse of Canaan, curse of Ham. Mm -hmm. now, they're saying, uh, now they're saying to us now, oh, you're, son, you're, you're Nubians, you're Cushites. It's the same damn thing. It's just a remix. He said, you're Hamite. He said in the video, we're Hamitic Gentiles. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. That's, that's the same thing as that right there. Same exact thing. You're supposed to be slaves. That's just saying to us. Yeah, what he does also, he finds some, some pictures that look real horrible and, and try to say, that, you see that? That's how we all really looked back then. You understand? Yeah. You destroy the, the image and the psyche of us. Yep. Y'all get the picture Moses? Oh, yes. Yeah, show them that, please. You got that, that too? I sent you the, the check the, uh, from the book, The Icons. The Icons. Written by who? Show them from. Show them the cover that. Surely we're lying. The icon. By who? By the Evans brothers. That was the first group that made it. But it's put together by a team yeah, of yeah. Uh, scholars. Right. Book uh, called The Icon. Let's see, what's in, let's see what's found in this like book. Seven, it's like sections of it is put together by different scholars. Yep. We're going to see how these biblical figures were factually depicted in paintings in early Europe, where we ruled for over a thousand years. Y'all see what you y'all see what y'all see here? Now I'm gonna show you. Hold it now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guide you through the pictures. Now, I got, now, that picture on the left, the, the, the Christ and his mother. That's whitewashed. I have the actual image in my house. Well, They're dark as night. There we uh, go. Well, there's a section in the book, right? Here. Okay, he's got it there. So y'all see it's the same picture, right? I just sent it to him. The prophet Moses is up at the top, holding the burning bush. In the left. Right. That one there. Zoom in so they can see him. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Can you see the woolly hair on his head? Look at his face. Don't okay. tell me that they didn't have color to make him white if he was white. Look at the, look at the picture around the skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they got, look at the garment that he's wearing. Man, them garments was out of sight. Look at that thing. Damn. Look at that thing. Okay, now let's get the wording. Move down. Let's zoom in on the words there. What does it say down there at the bottom? Above it says... Detail Prophet Moses. Yep. Can y'all see that? So when it says above, so go back above, move it up. The uh, Prophet Moses. That's King David on the other side yep. there. They That's say, King David on say, that side. Because yep. the thought is, oh, he was ruddy. Right. Yeah, ruddy brown, you lying bastards. Okay. So you got King, you got Moses, and you got David. Mm -hmm. Now, and we showed you Joseph. Who that right there in the bottom? 
That's Andrew. Oh, that's Andrew. That's one of the Prophet apostles. Andrew. One right. of the apostles. Another, apostles Andrew. Another Jew. Right. And they wanted to start lightening him up. See his hands. Look at his face. And his head. Why did, why his right. hands out? Look at his up. face. All right. So to, let's move on, because I don't want I, I want Deacon Ithon to get all this stuff out. Go to the video I sent you about. Because um, like like you said, this is warning shots. I ain't got to. I ain't got to go too deep nope. now. But if you start some crap again, we're gonna tear your behind up. Even worse. Go ahead. You got more than this. You go there. Just uh, blow, yeah, blow that up. So you know we're not making this up on the walls. Press play. In the very beginning is very short. We know from the Bible that the Israelites arrived in Egypt some 200 years before their exodus. In the original Hebrew, the Bible calls the Israelites God's people, or Amo Israel. If we write about our dates, it should be hard archaeological evidence for the arrival of these Amo around 1700 BCE. kilometers south of Avaris is the tomb at Beni Hassan. It dates to 1700 BCE. Because no one has looked for evidence of the Exodus in this period, the tomb has never been linked to the biblical story. Into Egypt from the area of modern Israel. in the Bible, the scene involves bearded Semites riding donkeys and bringing their families and flocks into Egypt. Like the biblical Israelites, they are wearing multicolored tunics. The hieroglyphic inscription on this wall calls these people the Amo, God's people. Looking in the right place, during the right time, we are the first to recognize a veritable snapshot of the migration of the biblical Israelites to Egypt. Black on the walls. So that's it. Can't hide it. Can't, can't hide this. Let's go to, um... Uh, what now? Okay, I'll go to this. Nature Knows the Color Line by J. Rogers. Where's my book at? How y'all brothers and sisters feel about this information that we're bringing out tonight? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Still can't hear you. All right. All praises. All praises. Page 123. Start at White's. White says. This is Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. What page is it? Page 123. 123. The bottom paragraph. Right. White says an interesting gradation of all shades down to the black is exhibited by the Jews. So this guy, what happened while well, Jay Rogers is giving us different um, scholars takes on how the colors of the Jews. This guy says they went from real white to black, which is false. So watch this. Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. So that, that clears it up. Go ahead. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. The Duchess de Ambertes, wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal, said that the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. Can be what? Can be seen in a single person. They all look the same. Jew and the Negro. The Portuguese, Israel, inhabited a lot of Portugal. Can be seen as the same person. Go ahead. So dark were the Jews. There you go. Go ahead. Especially of Portugal and southern Spain. This is, the, this is before the time of the Spanish Inquisition. We fled over there. Go ahead. That many whites thought all Jews were black or dark. Many whites thought what now? Back all then? Jews were black or dark. So what happened now? Slavery happened. You shall discontinue from your heritage. Now no one knows. We're but it was the- known back then. Go ahead. This belief, said Burbot, shows what an error most people are in since he says the german jews as for example those of prague are as white as most of the german country so this guy gives an argument no they're white they're arguing back and forth many of the jews who were banished from portugal by john second john the second yeah that's the king john the second he banished us during the time of spanish inquisition 
they were kicking us out of Spain. So Portugal was nice to us at that time. So we fled to Portugal. And this guy, to please the queen of Spain, started kicking us out also. So John II, go ahead. Many of the Jews who were banished from Portugal by John II, go ahead. Settled in the West Indies. Settled where? In the West Indies. Jamaica, go ahead. John Bigelow, who visited Jamaica in 1850. What year? In 1850. Go ahead. Saw the descendants of these Jews and says they were ne Negro. They were what? He, he couldn't even get it. He couldn't even get it. He startled it. He said he couldn't believe what he was reading. They were Negro. He said, yeah. The descendants of the Jews. <laughs> the <laughs> des he put an O there. That's why. <laughs> it says no groid. Oh, Negroid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. They were descendants of the Negroid. Mm -hmm. Jews is black over there in 1850 in Jamaica. They still are. We went over there. The, the Eastern Jews who settled in Austria. That's all, that's all I want. Oh, they're black. Just they're, they're black, too. Yeah. Go ahead. You can read that one. The Eastern Jews who settled in Austria, Poland, and Russia were Negroid, too. They're black also. Those, and those, brother, those brothers over there were, were threatened by Hitler to, to be um, subject to um, eugenics programs over there. And Margaret Singer bought it from them and bought it over here, and it became Planned Parenthood over here. Mm -hmm. All right? Which is a shit they won't tell you that. And you that's know what's heavy about that, Deacon? Yeah. You got dumb Negroes now trying to say that the people in the Caribbean are not Israelites. They're questioning the 12 tribes chart, okay? Questioning. And not just crush that questioning that they have. That there's a lot of people, especially um, West people in Jamaica, are questioning. There's a guy on um, 125th Street. I'm not going to say his name because this is going to put a nail in his head <coughs> saying, I want you to prove to me who the Jamaican people are and show me in writings that people call them the Jews. This is your proof. There you go. Okay? So go to 1st Maccabees 348. 1st Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48. And laid open the book of the Lord, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So what the Greeks did was the same thing they're doing now. They whitewashed the images. They, they, they took out our images and put their own in our books. Nothing new under the sun. This is iconoclasm in the Bible. Image destruction in the Bible. You saw the Ten Commandments. That's the same thing. Putting their images in our history. The same exact thing. No different. I got to do it. You done jumped on iconoclasm. Uh, what, what do you got? What do you uh, got? Isaiah 11. Huh? Let's not get to the history now. I would put an iconoclasm. Oh, again, yeah, sure. Put the put the thing I sent you earlier. The 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 picture with the yellow highlight on it. Yes, Isaac Reed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah definitely got this on there. Iconoclasm. Y'all want to know what this book is about? See this book here. This was a book that is, is entitled The Icon, and it's, it has images of of our foreparents painted all over the walls in Europe. Moses, like the pictures that we just showed earlier, David. Moses, David, Solomon, all that, all that's in these books before the Renaissance period. Renaissance. So you're going to write the pre-Renaissance period. During the Renaissance period, that was when they began to a campaign of whitewashing and destroying the images there. Let's read. Isaac, start it off. Start at the top. Iconoclasm, <laughs> Venetian looting in 1204 and the sack by the Turks in 1453 are well, the main reasons why only very few icons have survived in Constantinople. This is what you call the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. this part, this period here. Read. It may seem daring, therefore, to write an entire chapter on the icons of the capital. Yet the situation is not quite so hopeless as might appear at first glance. So what he's saying is that it might seem daring to talk about the images that are not tainted because he said there's still some left around. Go ahead. Icons exist, existed not only as panel paintings, but also as frescoes and wall mosaics, some of which have emerged... Some of, some of these frescoes and wall mosaics and paintings have did what? Have emerged from layers of whitewash. From layers of whitewash, letting you know that the white man is the devil. He's washed the pictures down. That's what, he's, that's what this book is telling you. Negroes, so-called Negroes, know nothing about books like this. You hear me? Go ahead, to do what? To, Read? To give an undiluted impression about... So these pictures that have not been whitewashed gives you an undiluted impression 
of the highest achievement of Constantinopolitan art, meaning that art that's over there in Rome, in Italy. Y'all, got, y'all understand? Because we ruled all of that during the Dark Ages, so you can understand. That's what, that's what the Renaissance was about, the rebirth of white rule. Now, right, I've got the, got the pictures. Now I got to I got to show it to him. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I'm going I'm just going to take a brief moment to show you how the white man is the devil. And then I'm then maybe if time permits we're going to read out the Bible that he's the devil. But I'm going to show you the devil's works. We're going to I'm going to demonstrate out of the books that the white man written that the white man has, not negroes, that he has recorded layers of whitewash. What I'm about to show you, I'm going to show you a picture that was taken several different times, and you're going to see the stages of whitewashing. That's going to blow your socks off, ain't it? Y'all ready for this? (sighs) This book was written by a a scholar from Switzerland, Gabriel Sez Rajna. Okay, and he recorded in the forewords that certain prejudices have led to the whitewashing of the images. So now what you're looking at, you think, right, this is Moses, right, hold it still, let the people see it. This is Moses, if you can see the scene, Moses, that's the army, Pharaoh's army behind him. Y'all see that? And then the next scene is Moses and the, and the army drowned in the Red Sea. Can y'all see that? You see the big figures in the picture? The big figures. Both, Moses, both of them are Moses. They're showing you different scenes of Moses. That's how they did it. One scene is, is Moses, she got the staff in his hand. Mm-hmm. See the stick? Can y'all see this? Yes, then the next one, they saw in another scene of Moses casting the stick and causing the sea to close up and kill the same Egyptians that's chasing us. Okay? Now move to the other picture. Okay? This is Moses again. You see that? Coming out of Egypt. So now why am I showing you this? Give me the book back. Y'all got that, all right? Now, this was painted on the wall in Upper Syria during Europus. Now, I'm going to find another scene for you. Come back. I ain't done yet. Take this. Show this to him. This is what I wanted to show you. This right here is Ezekiel and the Valley of the Dry Bones. This is also in the same area, in the, in the, in the synagogue of Dura Europus in Upper Syria. And this was painted during the third century AD. That's how old this picture is. Can y'all see that? Now, if you're looking at the picture, keep these images. I need it sharp so the people can remember what they see. Because when I show different books, they're going to have to remember what they just saw. This right here is, you see what my finger is right there? That's the valley. That's the reason why you see that opening, that, that dark opening. Y'all, y'all understand me? Mm-hmm. That represents the valley. Now, y'all really can't see the detail of this because this has been whitewashed. So you can understand. The, the next scene is Ezekiel being carried in the spirit. That's what this is. The hand of God above him when it said that he carried me away in the spirit. And you see down at the bottom, those are the bones that was thrown all in the valley. Do you see heads here? If you come over to the other side, you see heads, arms. You see these things here? Now on the other page, come on on the other side. These are the Israelites. This is Ezekiel. There's Ezekiel again with the dry bones coming back as Israelites. That's what you're looking at here. Can y'all see this? Now, it's washed, it's washed out, right? Now, watch this. They, they got it now. The same picture. This was, this, even this is whitewashed. But you can see that they had to come back and do it to completely destroy it with the first picture that I showed you. You see Ezekiel over there with the Israelites coming back? And then you look on this side, you see the valley. Now you can see the picture, the parts clear. Get it where you see the bones and see the, the heads and all that? This is, this is one layer of whitewash. This is one layer of whitewash. The picture that I showed you previously was a second layer of whitewash. Okay? Now, let's get the words on here where it tells you where these pictures are. Let them read it. Y'all bear with me. Y'all all right? Fresco showing the vision of the dry bones 
in the synagogue of what? Dura Europus, 3rd century A.D. Now move around on that picture to let them see, because this is what y'all just saw earlier. See the Israelites. So they washed them down, these damn demons. They was right, but, they, but I ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet. They washed them down. Y'all saw the final de destruction, like what we read out of that, where it says layers of whitewash. Move it to the other side. Okay, that's the valley again. So you got, you got more details. See all the heads and the legs and all that? That's Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Y'all all right? Can y'all see this? Yes. I know y'all shocked, but this is out of Dura Europus, 3rd century A.D. Now, let me show you what the pictures are really supposed to look like. From Dura Europus. Now, they didn't... This is, now, this is a... This is a photograph of the Israelite priests on the walls of the same place. Get the writing at the bottom so you'll know that it's in the same place. Priests on a fresco at Dura Europus, 3rd century A.D. So here's what I want to ask the class. This painting and the other paintings are in the same room. You follow me? So let's read the writing now. They go up into the writing. Mm -hmm. Thus the Israelite priests dressed in what? Move it over. White, White linen. linen. Let's get a look at them. Now. now let's get the priests. You see the color of them? That's the color of that the other pictures are supposed to be. Look at the feet and the legs. Look at the hands. Black. That's the color that all those pictures that we just saw. That's the way they're supposed to all look like this, because they're all in the same place. Where is these pictures at? Dura Europus, show them, the, show them the words again. Dura Europus, 3rd century A.D., so it's in the same place. Mm -hmm. High in the hell is one of our pictures, totally whitewashed, and these are not. And it's all talking about the Israelites. Ezekiel was a Levite priest. Yep. Right. We're reading the priests here. So why in the world did they lighten up Ezekiel and left these brothers black? Because Negroes don't study. That's why. That's the problem. So now, I just needed to drop that bomb. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Okay. Was what I say, 11-11? You okay, Ithan? Yeah, man. That was good. All right. All praises. I'm content. I say 11-11? <laughs> the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, mm -hmm. which shall be left from Assyria. Assyria is Kurdistan today. And from Egypt. Egypt. He was in Egypt. And from Pathros. Uh, Egypt is lower Egypt. Pathros is upper Egypt. Go ahead. And from Kush. Ethiopia. And from Elam. Iran, East India. And from Shinar. Iraq, Mesopotamia. And from Hamath. Central Syria. And from the islands of the sea. And other areas. So Israel is in Egypt. You want to keep, keep that in mind. Keep Egypt, Pathos, and Cush in mind. All right? Now, let's get uh, Jeremiah 44, verse 1. Jeremiah 44, verse 1. Jeremiah 44, verse 1. Because Israel had, Israel had, remember, Egypt was neighboring Israel. So whenever an um, empire would rise, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, Israel would flee into those areas of Egypt. You always ended up in Egypt, which is right next to Israel. It's right there. It borders. Read. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwell in the land of Egypt, yeah. which dwell at Migdal and at Tahaphanes and at Naph and in the country of Pathro, saying... Upper Egypt. So Israel, Jeremiah went to Upper Egypt to teach the people, to teach Israel and Egypt, period. You understand that? You see that? So the Lord said he will cover his people from those areas, even up until now, those were still over there in those areas. Remnants of us. Get um, 2 Maccabees 1 and 1. So Jeremiah is during Babylonian time. Isaiah was during the Assyrian uprising. Israel's in Egypt. Jeremiah, Israel's in Egypt during Babylon's time. Now we're going to read about the Greeks. 2 Maccabees 1 and 1. 2 Maccabees 1 and 1. The brethren, the Jews that be at Jerusalem and in the land of Judea, Wish unto the brethren, the Jews that are throughout Egypt, health and peace. See that? So when during the time of the Greeks, Israel was in Egypt once again. Y'all follow? 
So from Assyria all the way into Greeks, we was in Egypt, and from Greeks to the Romans, in Egypt, and from and afterwards in Egypt and other areas. Y'all follow? Yes, sir. All right. Let's get um, Babylon Timbuktu real quick. It's a page eight. The um, Babylon Timbuktu by Rudolf Al Windsor, mm -hmm. the North African, North African black Jews. He got to put black there because Negroes didn't think it's talking about white folks. So you got to put that redundant term, black Jews, at this time. Okay. And stop at where? I'll let you know. All right. I mean, Richard. Page 83 from Babylon to Timbuktu. At this time, the Jews would not accept Greek culture. You're in the time of the Maccabees. Go ahead. Nevertheless, Antiochus was determined to Hellenize the Jews. Cause the Jews to follow, accept white supremacy, white culture, assimilate. Go ahead. The army of Antiochus marched into Palestine to support Menelaus, the leader of the pro-Syrian party. As a result, many Jews were killed. Go ahead. Others escaped to the hills and to Egypt. And to where? And to Egypt. Go ahead. Only those Jews that supported Antiochus' policies remained in Jerusalem. Go ahead. An, an, an edict was promulgated interdicting the observance of the holidays, the Sabbath and circumcision. Those laws are forbidden. Go ahead. A statue of Jupiter was erected in the holy temple above the altar. The ab ab abomination of desolation. Go ahead. To this statue, the people brought the sacrifices of pig meat the animal which is an abomination to the Jews. Go ahead. Because of this religious persecution, the legitimate high priest, Onias III, and many other Jews fled into African countries such as Egypt, Ethiopia, and Cyrenaica, Libya. Stop. So all you want. So he fled into Egypt, Ethiopia, Cyrenaica, which is the Greek province of Libya. All right? So all you want it. So now, let's get this here. The encyclopedia, because, you know, Negroes don't read these kind of books. It's called the Encyclopedia Jewish Diaspora of the Jews in Africa. All right, so you're going to read. This is a Jewish encyclopedia that comes in three volumes. This is volume two. All right? Now, it's called Jewish Diaspora Origins, Experiences, and Culture because, we were, because these apologetics, or pathetics as I call them, were trying to say that Rudolf R. Wins' information is false. It's not true. It's, it's wrong. We, we rely on this book, and therefore it's false. Okay, we're going to read from their scholars then. Maybe they disagree with Windsor. Um, historical overview. According to Jewish biblical tradition, Jews descended from the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, went to Egypt. They were later expelled, passing through the desert on their way back to Palestine, which was periodically occupied by the pharaohs. Survivors of the destruction of the first temp temple by Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BCE founded a Jewish military colony in Elephantine, Egypt. So, so during Babylon's time, we fled to Egypt. Go ahead. In the 4th century BCE, after Alexander the Great's conquest, more extensive Jewish settlement occurred. Read that, read that earlier in 2 Maccabees 1 and 1. Go ahead. He invited Jews to settle in Alexandria, which became a cultural center. The Old Testament was translated into Greek, the Septuagint translation. Mm -hmm. By the 2nd century BCE, Cyrene and Carthage had Jewish settlement. Cyrene, which is Cyrenaica, Libya, and Carthage. That's, that's Tunis. Remember the... Um, the eldest class last week, but that brother was still in slavery in that area of Africa. That was Tunisia. Mm -hmm. That's Carthage today. Oh, that was Carthage back then. Tunisia is ancient Carthage. Go ahead. Some Jewish traditions remain in many areas today. During Roman times, Jews were noted as far west as Gibraltar, and they had significant political and economic importance. At times, this led to clashes with their neighbors, as in Alexandria. Jerusalem fell in 70 CE, and zealots fled to Egypt, where they fomented a Jewish revolt, capturing large ports of the countryside, but, but not any urban areas. The Romans suppressed these uprisings. You finished Elephantine Egypt? Elephantine Egypt? Uh, no, I Did you get there yet? I passed that. And you oh, said that's what you go to. Right. What are Acts 2? Acts 2, almost done. Acts 2. Mm, verse 5. Verse 5. Yeah. Acts 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how here we, every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, mm -hmm. Parthians, Persia, 
and Medes and Elamites. That's Iran or Eastern or India. Go ahead. And the dwellers in Mesopotamia. Iraq. And in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. Greece. Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt. In Egypt. Go ahead. And in the parts of Libya about Cyrene. Cyrenaica. See that? That's all I want you to get. You read the rest. Read the rest. And strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. That's us also. All Jews about all, from all over the place. Now, go to Babylon Timbuktu again, page 88. Page 88 and largest exodus. The largest exodus. So Israel fled to this area. This is going into after 70 AD. Page 88. The largest exodus to the Jews is right uh, toward the end. Between the second and third centuries, you'll see it. Okay. The largest exodus. I the to... largest exodus of the Jews occurred during the persecution by the Arabs led by Muhammad. He had said on his dying bed that he wanted Islam to be supreme throughout all of Arabia. Go ahead. There was a Jewish tribe called Rahab, which crossed the Red Sea and migrated to the extreme point of the western Sudan. Go ahead. At the same time that the Jews were migrating westward across the Sudan from Ethiopia, they also migrated southward from Libya. Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco to the fertile region between the Senegal and Niger rivers. To the west coast. We went from e Libya, Tunisia, Acts 2, Libya, Tunisia, that's North Africa, Northeast Africa, Carthage, Algeria, which is the same place, a little under um, Tunisia, Morocco, go ahead, north also, to the fertile region between Senegal and the, and the Niger rivers. Go ahead. When the Jews from the north and the east met between these two rivers, they established a confluence or crossroad in West Africa. We met up and started working with each other. Go ahead. Where men could exchange their culture, ideas, and merchandise. These Jewish migrations went on with great frequency about 300 AD, and they continued with the utmost regularity for 1,200 years. Joseph J. Williams points out the course of the Jewish migration from northeastern Africa. He writes that the Jews migrated up the Nile passing Memphis, Elephantine, Kardom, and then they turned west at Kordofan in central Sudan in the region of the White Nile. Let me say Memphis, Elephantine, Kardom. Remember those words. Go ahead. In the region of the White Nile, Williams thinks some Jews settled in the country of Shalak in the southern Sudan and Uganda. He continues by tracing the migration from Kordofan going west to Darfar, Lake Chad, Kano, and then to the countries of the Niger River. The original habitation of the Songhe people was Kongia, Kokia, or Kuka. This place was situated in the Dendi country and known as the Dendina, lying near the Niger River on the northwestern border of what is now the modern state of Nigeria. Go ahead. Many scholars think that the Songhe people came from Egypt or Ethiopia. Remember Isaiah 11, Egypt, Ethiopia, or Kush. Remember that, Elam? Hamath, go ahead. Because there, ex there, e there exist many Egyptian culture complexes among them. For example, the preparation of the dead body for burial. Go ahead. Zael Yamini came to Kuka about 300 AD, an ancient abode of the Sanghe tribe. He established a line of kings known as the Za, Ja, or the Dia dynasty. This founder of the first Sudanic dynasty in Western Africa was a black Jew. His name is sometimes written Za'al Ayaman. Joseph J. Williams say that a citizen of Timbuktu named Abder, Abderman S. Sadi wrote 1650 in his book Tariqa S. Sudan, History of the Sudan, that Za'al Ayaman was derived from Za Min El Yem, Yem, Yemen, which means he has come from Yemen. Mm -hmm. Za'el Yemeni came to the Niger country by way of Ragla in central Al Algeria. Rag Wargla was a great trading center of the black Jews. Dr. Barth and Professor Godbe say that Za, the founder of the first Jewish dynasty, established his capital later at Goy, on the eastern upper Niger River. See that? So we established a capital in the east upper Niger River. Now, this book is false. Okay. I'm going to read it. Uh, Encyclopedia Jewish Diaspora, it's page 454. Read that. Page 454. Yeah. Migrations into Sub-Saharan. And that 1300s to 1400s CE. You'll see it. Just end there. Migrations into Sub-Saharan Africa. Now remember, Babylon Timbuktu is false. That's a Jewish diaspora encyclopedia written by people outside of Negroes, apparently. Go ahead. 
In later centuries, Jews are believed to have settled in Western Africa during the... Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. But read again. In later centuries, Jews are believed to have settled in Western Africa. Go ahead. During the height of the Sangha, Mali, Ghana, and Kanam Bornu empires, according to accounts from explorers of the region, several powerful Jews... According to accounts from explorers of the region. So they saw it. So it's not believed to be a fact. Read the words. Go ahead. Several powerful Jewish families of the... Several, on, several powerful Jewish families... We read about that in here, Babylon Timbuktu, the Songhai Empire, they established these empires and capitals all the way to the upper Niger River. Go ahead. Several powerful Jewish families of the Songhai Empire were of Jewish origin until Eskaya Muhammad came to power and in 1492 decreed that all Jews either convert to Islam or leave the region. That's why in the movie Roots, um, Kunta would say praise to Allah because they forced us either to convert to Islam or be killed or go into slavery. So we either would convert willingly or would convert falsely and still keep Jewish customs in secret and get caught and killed or remain in the land as false Muslims. Go ahead. According to certain records in Timbuktu, an older community... In where? Timbuktu. Mm, go ahead. An older community was formed by a group of Egyptian Jews who traveled by way of the Sahel Corridor. A group of what, Jews? Egyptian Jews. See where Israel always fled to? Go ahead. Who traveled by way of the, of the Sahel Corridor through Chad into Mali. Another, where? Chad from where? Through Chad into Mali. West Africa again. Go ahead. Another community was that of the Zuha, Juha, ruler of Kokoi, lo located near the Niger River, whose name is only known as Zuha Alamein. You read that. We just read that in Babylon Timbuktu. Zul Alameya, Ayamayan. Go ahead. Zaal Ayamayan. Go ahead. Or Zua Min Al Yaman, meaning he comes from Yemen. That's in this book that they say is false. Yep. Go ahead. Exactly right. Local legends state that Zua Al Yaman was a member of one of the Jewish colonies transported from Yemen by the Abyssinians in the sixth century. E e Ethiopians is Abyssinians. Ethiopians. Go ahead. In the sixth century CE. Zua Alamein is said to have traveled into West Africa along with his brother and eventually established a local Jewish community between Mali and northern Nigeria. Some accounts place West African Jewish communities in the Ondu forests of Dahomey, south of Timbuktu. In the 1930s, these groups still maintained a Torah scroll written in Aramaic that had been burned into parchment with a hot iron instead of ink so it could not be changed. It's still there. Go ahead. The decline of the Jewish communities of the West Africa Maghreb most likely began with the influx of Arab invaders into North Africa. Remember in Babylon Timbuktu said that he was going to force Islam. Muhammad said he vowed to, to, he vowed to push Islam, and he did it by the sword. So as Ishmael was pushing, pushing from Egypt down, Israel would migrate further west or hide, move further south. When as they were running, they would meet up and establish communities. And some of them would get conquered and converted or conquered and killed and, and sold off. Because remember, the Spanish kicked us out of Spain. We ran back to Africa, and the Muslims are there. So we, 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 we were hiding. We can't know where to go. Because the curse has followed us wherever we ran to. Go ahead. The decline of the Jewish communities of the West Africa Maghreb most likely began with the influx of Arab invaders mm -hmm. into North Africa starting in 640 CE. Remember it said the highest... Exodus, the largest exodus, based upon the Arab in Arab invasion. That's the same Babylon Timbuktu. Go ahead. And later into West Africa in the 1300s and 1400s CE. See that Middle Ages during the Spanish Inquisition. What time is it now? One more, one more um, gap. Your Negro land. Get that one. Mm -hmm. hey, we'll stop and it that, there. That right there, that history just covers you Israelite groups. That's mad because we're in Africa. Raising up the Israelites there. Yeah. You just got historical proof that not only are there, but they're still following the customs of the Israelites mm -hmm. up until now. Yeah. Okay? Because you got a lot of groups that are against us because we're raising up the people over there. And mad. Okay? Read, read that, Cap. Yeah. Bring it out for me. You know, know what to do. Yeah. Negro land or Negritia was an archaic term in your. your, your Europe, European mapping. It's an old term for European mapping. Describing the inland and thinly explored region in West Africa as an area populated with Negro people. As an area what? 
as an area populated with Negro people. Go ahead. This area compromised, comprised, comprised at least the western part of the region called Sudan. Wait, they didn't N catch something. Read that. It says what? Describe describing what? Describing the inland and thinly explored region in West Africa as an area populated with Negro people. Can you tell how the way this is written that he's saying that that something is odd with this, meaning that the Negro people don't belong there? That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. The way it's written, it says populated with Negro people. Like that's something odd. Y'all pick that up? He, no, they ain't he could have just said African. Exactly. Okay, why did, That's the point. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to get him he to see. He could have just said African. He didn't say, he didn't say, he said populated. In other words, saying like populated with a whole nother group of people. And you know what's heavy? That goes with the Zondervan Bible di dictionary. Where exactly, it says, that's the point. Not the not Negroes. The Negroes. Mm -hmm. okay. He says, pop, in, other words, in other words, it's saying that it's populated with a people that's not from there. That's what he's saying. Right. Go ahead. This area comprised at least the western part of the region called Sudan, not to be confused with the modern country. The term is probably a direct translation of the Arabic term Bilad al-Sudan, meaning the land of the blacks. Or Negro land. That's the Arabic term for Negro land. Okay, Co corresponding to about the same area, there were various kinds of people in the area, including the Jews of Balad el Sudan. Go ahead. Some of the greatest states of those considered part of Negro land were the Bornu Empire. The Bornu em Empire was established by Jewish communities. The Kanem Bornu Empire. I read that earlier. The Kanem Bornu Empire was established by Jewish communities that came out from the east and migrated further south, and from the south further west. That's, that's the reason why he's making the distinction with Negroes being in that area, because right. he's basically saying that these are Jews. Right. Go that's ahead. the point. And the Sokotu Caliphate. Now go up, click on um, Jews of Bildad. Bilad. Let me go go to Hannibal. Jews, go ahead. Jews of the Bilad al Sudan. Of the land of the blacks. Jews of the land of the blacks. Jews of Negro land. Go ahead describes West African Jewish communities who were connected to known Jewish communities. Stop. It says known Jewish communities. Not maybe, not possibly. It is believed, suspected. It says known Jewish communities. Go ahead. From the Middle East, North Africa, or Spain and Portugal. Why? From the Spanish Inquisition. They fell from Spain and Portugal. King John placed them there or Jamaica. They ran up there. Go ahead. Various pseudo historical records. Stop, stop. Now, let's look, look, look at the word. It's trying to be slipped now. Various pseudo, meaning false. False, yes. It's, first it says known Jewish communities. Now it says various false historical records. <laughs> no, no, no. You read factual records earlier. Go ahead. That's the same way that the white man does when he says, hold it. That's the same way that the white man does when he says, you look at the picture, you see Christ is black. Then he tells you they almost look black. Right. <laughs> and same kind of stuff. And think about it. It says various pseudo historical records. Who made the fake records? And why? Who would doctor make those records up and make them fake and white? What he's trying to do is put confusion in there. Yeah. Because this is their research. We didn't make fake records and put them there. When do we have a chance to do it? Mm -hmm. So who would do that? Mm -hmm. Beyond? Various pseudo-historical records attest to their presence at one time in the Ghana, Mali, and Songhai Empire. That earlier. That's in Belmont Timbuktu and the Jewish diaspora book. Go ahead. And Songhai Empires, then called the Bilad as Sudan. Then called the land is land is black. Go ahead. From the Arabic meaning land of the blacks. Jews, Jews from Spain, Portugal, and Morocco in later years also formed communities off the coast of Senegal and on the islands of Cape Verde. They are black over there speaking Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Me over there too, go ahead. These communities continue to exist for hundreds of years, but have since disappeared due to the changing social conditions, persecution, migration, and assimilation. Yeah, slavery. Now, I, can't, I cannot leave without this. Go to, um, real quick, let's go to... Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I gotta go, go back to that book again, 455. <coughs> I'll read myself. This is about the second century. This is, this is uh, Jews in Africa, same book, Jewish diaspora. By the second century BC, Cyrene, Libya, and Carthage had Jewish settlement. Some Jewish traditions remain in many areas today. Carthage, <coughs> we'll do a Carthage now. Now, go, we're gonna go to 
I'm gonna go to real quick. Hannibal's picture. Hannibal from Carthage during the Punic Wars. All right. Now, hold on. Let's go there. We go to Babylon Timbuktu. I'll read it. I'll read it fast. Babylon Timbuktu. This is page 107. All right. Um, it says during the Punic Wars and after North Africa contained a large Hebrew population. This Hebrew population made converts and intermarried with the Canaanites and the native Africans that were there. But we were the larger in population. So the term given to the North Africans, since we were the majority, fell on us also. We became called Carthaginians. You understand? The original Carthaginians was Hamites. We took that over. Like Harlem, you know, whites of Harlem. We said, now we take that. Harlem is ours now. It was originally theirs. All right? The city, of, the city and language of Hannibal. At the ruins of Carthage, archaeologists have found about 4,000 inscriptions in the ancient language of Canaan. Nahum Salt says these inscriptions date from the time of Nehemiah, Persia, Simon the Just, Maccabees, of Hannibal, and Hasdrubal, as his brother, says Salt. And most viable of all, we have found again the ancient language and writing of Canaan in that land, the rich, idiomatic, idiomatic speech of a city which once counted 700,000 inhabitants. And we, Hebrew writers, we who write and feel in, their, in our biblical tongue have recognized at once that this recalled Phoenician language nothing, is nothing more nor less than Hebrew, a pure Hebrew dialect, nearly the same as was spoken in the country of Israel. They found the language of Israelites in that land. It says, the population of Carthage was derived from Palestine, and its civilization was Hebraic in origin. Um, Slopes is certain after much research that the language Hannibal spoke and in which he directed his troops was Hebrew. There is evidence that the Carthaginians possessed a high priesthood and their ceremonies and sacrifices were similar to the rituals found in the book of Leviticus because Ephraim had their own priests. Um, according, to my, according to some inscriptions, the Hebrew tribes of Asher and Zebulon were in Carthage from the foundation of the city. So they went there along with Ham and they stayed there and then eventually more of, them, more of us migrated over there and took over. At the ruins of Carthage were excavated many inscriptions containing Hebrew names such as Joab, Joes, and Joel. The city of Tunis, or Tunisia, or Carthage today, is said to be neither Arab nor European. Tunis is a Jewish city. Nowhere else does the Jew feel at home as he does in Tunis. So it says to, so beautiful, so beautifully, and indeed Tunis, the inheritor of Hebrew Carthage, is the eternal city of the Jews. Now, um, real quick, I'm gonna get this real fast, then we jump in the other side. There ain't much, I was just gonna show the first Um, yeah, uh, it's called The Story of Civilization, number three, by Will Durant. The section is uh, The Story of Civilization, by Will Durant, the top side goes from Caesar and Christ. It's, around the, it's going into the middle, it's going into all the time leading to Christ. All right, from the Punic Wars and down into Rome and so forth in the Byzantine Empire. This is a three, this is a multi volume book as well. I'm gonna go to page, shout out to Officer Ezra for giving me this book, man, all praises, thank you. Um, page 41, gonna <coughs> give me some gold here. Page 41 is called Hannibal Against Rome. It says the Carthaginians were Semites, akin in blood and features to the ancient Jews. Read again. Read again. The Carthaginians were Semites. The Carthaginians were the people of Shem, so you can understand. Were Semites. Akin in blood. Akin blood related. And features. And features. To the ancient Jew. To the ancient Jew. Their language now and then struck a Hebraic note as when it called the chief magistrates Shafets, the Hebrew Shafetim or judges. The men grew beards but usually shaved the upper lip with bronze razors. Most of them wore a fez or turban, shoes or sandals, and a long goose loose gown. But the upper classes adopted the Greek style of dress, <coughs> dyed their robes of purple, and fringed them with glass beads. <laughs> so they assimilated themselves, but they still maintained Israelite customs right. while under the Greek fashions. You follow? Right. <laughs> Show them the handle, please. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh -oh. Give them the pictures. First of all, before you do it, let me tell you where these pictures are. Before you do it to them, before you give them a heart attack and make them fall out the chair, 
before the, the underwear get totally ripped up. I know they already. <clears throat> the information that we are about to show on the screen comes from the book entitled The Image of the Black in Western Art. Who put this book out? Let's find out. Let's get the writing. Do you see what I'm looking for? What am I looking for? Distributed what? by Harvard University Press, Cambridge. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Distributed by who? Harvard. You can't get no better than that. Okay, we got books from Oxford University too. And Yale. You can't, and Yale. I got Yale here. <laughs> okay, so don't mess with us. Now, <clears throat> show what's in the book. Let me show in the book first, then when we put it on the screen, you'll know that it's from the same book. Here we go. So they, they can see the pictures. These are the coins minted of Hannibal. Now, that's the reverse side of the coin, the elephants. elephants. The okay, so y'all know about that? You want to speak on that? Yeah. Tell them about that. When he conquered um, Sicily, he had crossed the Alps. They didn't expect him to do it. He was a, a master strategist of war. And many of the Edomite militaries today base their war tactics off of him. He also, I've also read somewhere that the um, Spartans in him um, shared war tactics together. Anyways, he crossed the Alps of, of, of elephants. And so when he conquered, he invented coins of his face and elephants on the back of the coin. Now, get the words. It's the next slide. There it is. <laughs> Etruscan coins. Um, head of a black mahout, uh, bronze diems, British Museum, elephant, British Museum. Right. The, the, they're telling you that the back side of the coin has an elephant on it. That's right. what they're saying. Observe the head of the black mahout. And on the reverse side is the elephant. So who are we looking at? Hannibal. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. That's Hannibal's picture. All right. So let's um, try to get around that one. So I have to end it on this. I got to end it, but I got way more to go. We got more bombs. Show the books. Show the save books. them. Save them. Um, and the books. Yeah, yeah we're going to keep them. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be that sometime in uh so we'll set up five. We'll fall back. Alright, so next time I'll come up, well, those who I teach again, I'll we'll continue where we left off. Let's wait till they retire. Alright? Just wait till they cover up trying. All this is in the tweet. We well, all this information we have is in the Tor Chives video also. All this information, these sources we have, right. a lot of it is in the Tor Chives video breakdown as well. So you we always watch that as you know, we have time. Now, the people that is trying to debunk us is calling themselves apologetics. <laughs> they picked the right name because they're going to have to apologize to us. <laughs> okay? Because we just showed that those apologetics are so pathetic, they're going to have to apologize. They ain't seen nothing yet. Okay? I've not seen nothing yet. Hello, I'm Elton Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom. Reading the book of 
Sometimes I ask you to cuck at my fears Then I saw it was true The Bible is the truth Them spirits left from out of breath But now I see the proof What's my identity? This ain't serenity My life's a struggle in a bubble full of evil deeds I used to go to church But evil's gotten worse Some for the quiet smoking ganja till my lungs hurt I was a fornicator I was a wicked nigga Made in America like figurines and action figures But then I figured out The scripts is my way out I'm God's chosen soul was broken but I'm hopeful now Repented of my sins, keeping the lost within Now all my borders blue, now I'm rocking my friends Now I'm in Israelite, now I'm a son of God Now wake up my people, we are the broken crowns There's a war inside my head And I'm drowning in regret when the lights come down, got an empty crown My body's missing pieces Can't pull it all together My body's missing pieces I wish I could remember My body's missing pieces Can't pull it all together My body's missing pieces I wish I could Thank you for listening to the Forefront Radio. We now have a cash app. The link is in the description of the page here on anchor.fm, also on Spotify. We appreciate you listening in. We do have a few features that we are including now. We are selling a few products such as watches, perfumes, colognes, and other uh, products will be available for our Israelite community, as well as the general community of the population. We have a Facebook page. Just type in The Forefront Media, and you'll be able to get updates of of, uh, various shows that we drop when they do drop um, please do share this show if you like the show and we do hope that you do love this show and uh, tune in for more uh, episodes once we have them available thank you for listening to the forefront i'm your host afia levi israel Shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not want. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Give it my people, incline your ears to my word. Sayings of old 
But she have not heard nor have known We will not hide it from our children Showing the truth to each generation To praise the Lord and His strength And His wonderful works For He established a testimony And a law appointed for Israel Which He hath commanded our fathers To make them known to the children That they may set their hope in God And not forget the works of God But keep His commandments That they may set their hope in God And not forget the works of God But keep His commandments That they may set their hope in God Thank you.